It's a secret twelve that the angels desire to look into how they of the angel in his announcement to the shepherds, fear not. The angels spoke words of comfort. See, the shepherds were brave men. They faced all kinds of dangers in protecting their sheep. The fact that they were fearful at the appearance of the angel indicated the angel was real, and the announcement was of great importance. The angel's message was, I announce to you good news the people. The message was for all people, not just the Jewish nation. It was for all the people of all centuries. It was for us today, not just the first century. What was that good news? Not that God had sent a soldier or a judge to meet man's greatest need. Lord, the message was clear. God was sending his son for the benefit of all people. He was coming as our savior to take our place in providing the one sacrifice needed to take away sin once and for all. The angels, who had always served the and the spoken ear, a whole multitude of God, they were anxiously awaiting that very moment when this would happen. The angels had praised God at the creation of the universe. They now gathered over the fields in the presence of the shepherd to declare God's glory at the birth of the Savior. Many years before, Ezekiel had written that the glory of God had left the temple in Jerusalem because of the sin of Israel. But now, hundreds of years later, the glory of God had returned in the person of God's Son to do the Father's will. The angel's message declared peace, goodwill towards men. God's peace is not given to those who have goodwill, but to those who are the recipients of God's will or faith. To all people. This Christmas is a very special break. Right? God wants us to experience that peace which he announced to the shepherds through the angels. And I know the angels would want us to experience it too. Tonight, as we see the example of the angels, we need to glorify and worship God for the amazing gift of his son. We should not be able to contain ourselves just as the angels were not able to contain themselves. Don't let your familiarity with this great event keep you from worshiping God this Christmas. We also need to celebrate the glorious event in peace. Through faith in Christ, we are the recipients of God's will and favor. We are a blessed people. We can celebrate because we have a, a personal relationship with the Savior who came on the Christmas morning. The angels returned to heaven. I can't imagine some of the conversations that they must have had. They had seen with their own eyes the extent of God's love for mankind. For God now was man. And as a result, they continued to worship their God. Today, we need to see anew what the angels saw that first Christmas and bow in worship of our great God who loves us beyond anything we can imagine. It was demonstrated 2,000 years ago and the gift of God's Son to us. Well, Ice and Pastor Jen will share with us some of those observations. And I want to the birth of Christ is of those humble shepherds. And when I look at this story, I think to myself how incredible, how profound, how simple. Here were the lowest of the low in that society in that day. They were the scum of the earth. They were considered unclean. They were considered people that you couldn't even touch if you were going to worship God. And yet here they were, the lowest of the low, being given the privilege of being the first people on the planet next to Mary and Joseph, the very first people to see the Messiah that had been promised for thousands of years. What an incredible, incredible thing. These that were considered unclean by Jewish priests to be the first to see Christ in the flesh. And it's a reminder to me that all of us, when we see the Messiah as he really is, and when we respond to him pro appropriately, he makes us clean. He makes us brand new. Just as we saw the contrast between those well-dressed priests and those humble shepherds, so we see our lives that are so filled with religion and the trappings of religion and all the smoke 